Hello, my name is Mr. Weirich, and today we'll be starting on chapter two of your geometry book. What we're dealing with is inductive reasoning. Now, this is the main part of geometry. This is the stuff that you need to get really, really good at. And basically, if you watch any of the law and order CSI kind of shows, this is what it is. You compile a bunch of clues together. You say, if this is true, then this is true. If this is true, then this is true. And if this happened, then this is what happened. And this is where we need to go with that. It's your ability to apply some things that they have given you, uh, like 90 degree angles, complementary, supplementary, and instead of going in an algebra sense with those, just working towards a more holistic approach of figuring out, okay, then this is also going on and this is also going on. You'll be using this a lot in this chapter to do some proofs and some flow chart kind of things, uh, whatever it is really that our book specifically gets into. Uh, the important thing here is a conjecture, and a conjecture is a conclusion based on your evidence or based on whatever you've seen. There's different ways to find a conjecture. Um, basically, you kind of figure out what's going on. Like, uh, for example, finding a pattern, if I write 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, then your conjecture, the idea that you should come up with is that I'm writing even numbers, and the next one should be 12, and then after that, 14. You can check the data and see if there's any kind of pattern in the data, see what's going on there. Like, you would expect a pool, if you graph visitors to a pool over a long period of time, that like across the summer that would go up, and then across the winter months there wouldn't be quite as many visitors to the pool. And not just because the pool is closed, but people don't think about swimming when it's absolutely freezing outside. The other thing that you can do, and that's very important in conjectures, is to find counterexamples that are happening. Now, the one in your book is a really good counterexample, so I wanted to use it already. It has a line that's looking like this, uh, with, I think, J and L here, and here's K. Uh, and the conjecture that they have is that if JK is congruent to KL, then K must be the midpoint of JL. Now we can see in this case that that is not true, okay? Now if we had an M here and JM was congruent to ML, then yes, M would be the midpoint. But you have to watch yourself. If it's worded weird and you don't have a picture, or if the picture doesn't match the information, you can't necessarily use that as a conjecture. Counter examples are a great way to go. Say, okay, well, if you say that this is automatically true, let's look at a situation where it's not. Okay? Now, counter examples, conjecture, and inductive, inductive reasoning are all things that need to be added into your notes. And don't forget, come in later today. Uh, when you come in on Wednesday after the test is over, I'm going to expect to check your chapter one notes. So anything that I told you to take down in the chapter one notes, go back through those videos if you need to. Make sure you have that. We will check that on Wednesday.